let me record and all right okay so so last time we were discussing a uh, photoelectric effect uh, right and uh, we talked about threshold frequency, a particular frequency that is required for the photoelectric effect to happen. Uh, this frequency is associated to the electromagnetic radiation that we are throwing at, at the metallic surface. And then uh, the other thing we talked about was the work function of that metallic surface. So there are two things in the, that may constitute uh, or makes up this system. Uh, we have one thing is the electromagnetic wave and the other one is the metal that this electromagnetic wave is going to hit or in interact with, right? So these two things make up a system. Now, for the photoelectric effect to happen, there are conditions on both of these two things. On the electromagnetic wave, the condition is that it has to be of a particular frequency. And the second condition is uh, I emphasize the word and because it is important. Uh, both of them should be together. The second thing is for the metallic surface or uh, any uh, uh, surface that there should be uh, a specific work function for that uh, surface such that the energy of the electromagnetic wave is at least equal to the or greater than that work function. Only then it's possible to jump out of the surface so that we are providing them enough uh, energy to the electrons so that they can break their bonds in the surface and then uh, move away. Uh, so that's what we did uh, last time. Uh, before we finished, uh, someone had a question. Uh, can you please uh, rephrase your question? I think it was... Uh, Regarding uh, the 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 application of uh, yeah, this photoelectric effect, charge. It was about the metal itself getting charged, like the substance that the photons uh, are yeah, emitted on. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So, uh, so electrons are emitted. It would become uh, positively charged as electrons leave uh, the metallic surface. So the net charge would be positive, and that is uh, true. It would leave the uh, surface charged, and there are multiple uses for uh, this as well. One of the most important and uh, a use that helps in uh, understanding uh, other aspects of uh, quantum electrodynamics uh, are is uh, it is used in a photomultiplier. Now, what is a photomultiplier? It is really uh, a detector that detects photons. How does it do that? It does that by if if a photon hits that uh, detector and the photon is absorbed, so to speak, it, that would mean that uh, one electron would be emitted. And if you can detect an electron coming out of the material uh, of the photomultiplier, that means that one photon was detected. And similarly, if, if uh, there are two photons, so two electrons would be emitted. So that's how you can know that, okay, so photons were emitted indeed, and I have, uh, I can measure these photons. Uh, so is that, is that clear? Is that it that you were asking or anything else as well? No, that's it, thank you. Okay, all right, so. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, let's continue from here onwards. Uh, now I'm going to talk a bit more about this photoelectric effect. Sometimes uh, we like to uh, uh, give this a name uh, as characteristics. Uh, characteristics of the photoelectric, I just write electric effect. Okay, so again, the, the first characteristic, so to speak, is what we have already talked about. And that one, uh, that is that not all electromagnetic waves are capable of causing this photoelectric effect or producing this photoelectric effect, 
right? Uh, you need a specific electron from magnetic radiation. Metal means that it has to have a specific work function when the photoelectric effect together, then uh, an electron will be uh, emitted from the metallic surface. So, so the first point is that not all EM waves are, are capable of producing this effect. So producing this, I'll just write this effect now. The effect is, uh, of course, the photoelectric effect. So what you need, you need a specific, we require specific energy EM wave and a, a specific uh, metal. So it's a combination of the two and a specific metal which uh, implies a specific work function. Uh, if we have these two conditions and they satisfy the, the, the for a photoelectric effect, they, um, they match each other, only then the photoelectric effect will take place. The, again, the condition is that uh, the, it, it, so we are talking about energies, right? Energy is HF. As we discussed uh, in previously, uh, this is the energy of any uh, electromagnetic wave. It, it carries this uh, energy. It's this energy is quantized. It is discrete, and it comes in packets, right? And those packets were uh, the photons that I drew. Uh, if you remember, something like this. So these are uh, the packets, photons, uh, and. So, so the condition is that this E equals HF, which is the energy of the electromagnetic wave, should be greater than or equal to HF naught. F naught is the uh, threshold frequency, right? And it determines the work function for the material. So again, the energy of the electromagnetic wave should be either equal to that or greater than that so that it is capable of removing an electron from the metallic surface. Uh, is that point uh, clear? <clears throat> yes, sir. Any, uh, uh, it's clear? Okay, all right. Uh, so now the, the, the second characteristic follows from this one that if the EM wave radiation is, uh, if the, sorry, if the frequency of this radiation is less, if the frequency of e electromagnetic radiation uh, is less than the threshold frequency. Uh, so, I'll just write F naught, uh, it's understood, right? That F naught is the threshold frequency as we uh, discussed in the previous class. So this frequency is for uh, as any uh, specific metal, right? It would be different for different uh, metals. So if the frequency is less than that, then no photoelectric effect happens. Then, uh, or you can say then photoelectric does not happen. As in, you don't see any uh, electrons being removed from the uh, surface. Uh, now, again, how is this thing happening? Uh, let's uh, let's use this point to explain that as well. Uh, so, suppose this is a metal, and on the on its surface are electrons. So, these circles that I'm drawing, these are uh, all electrons on this surface. Uh, what you do is you take a photon an electromagnetic wave and you hit it with uh with it on this metallic surface what how is the electron emitted right so any any suggestions you can you take a guess 
how is this setup uh, capable of removing an electron from this surface? Any idea? Okay, so uh, of course, what will happen is that this photon, when it strikes the metallic surface, it is really striking an electron. And what happens is that that uh, specific electron gains that energy from the photon because the photon will be absorbed by the electron. So if I draw this uh, system uh, over here, uh, here we have a photon that strikes this electron. The electron absorbs all this energy and it go, goes to a higher state, so to speak, which means in this case, it is already at the surface. So it just, it is removed from the surface of the metal. So the electron will then just go away, uh, be ejected uh, from this one. Uh, of course, when this happens, uh, the 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 electron is sitting with a lot of other electrons as well right and you know uh, so for example uh, i'll give you an example of because everyone would know that uh, a microwave oven right a microwave oven is also uh, working on the principle of uh, this photoelectric effect or uh, the fact that electromagnetic radiations are being absorbed by the uh, uh, by the food uh, in the microwave so what happens there is that uh, when you put something in the microwave, the temperature rises, right? It gets heated up, uh, heated up, and when that happens, uh, how is that happening? That's what we want to uh, discuss. So the photon is absorbed by the electrons of the of the object, whatever surface we're talking about, whether it be food or any metal. Uh, and when the photon is absorbed, there are a lot of other electrons sitting in its neighbor. So at least two electrons are sitting in its neighbor and there's one at the bottom as well. And nothing at top because there it is, uh, we are talking about the surface, right? So, uh, so these are the uh, electrons that are sitting with it. And when it absorbs the energy, uh, you would expect it to be vibrating more than it was before. Right, because that is gaining energy, and the like these electrons they're already vibrating, uh, if, if whether it's a solid or any other uh, substance, they're already vibrating. If it gains some energy from the photon, it vibrates more. When it vibrates more, it collides with these neighboring electrons as well. And when it collides with these neighboring electrons, what is it essentially doing? Is in terms of energy, it is transferring its energy to these uh, further electrons that are sitting in its neighbor. Oh, when that happens, those electrons also start vibrating uh, more than they were before. And that would uh, mean, we already know, we have studied this before in matter physics that uh, if something is vibrating, then uh, is moving with faster speed of the molecules are vibrating more and more, uh, the temperature is basically increasing. So that's why the food in your microwave oven gets heated up uh, because the, uh, again, because the photon is absorbed by an electron, that electron collides with the neighboring electrons and transfers energy to those neighboring electrons. And hence uh, the entire uh, substance as a whole uh, starts vibrating more than before and the temperature increases. Okay, so was that clear? Uh, it, it, was it clear? Any any questions from that point? No, so it's clear. Okay, all right. So uh, the, the next characteristic is uh, this thing that I've stated before that one electron is capable of only absorbing one photon at one given time. So one electron can absorb only one photon at a given time, at 
a given time. So, so if you look at this example, at the instant, if it's not the, if I even sent another photon with this one, at the same time I'm sending two photons to the electron, it will only absorb one of it. And when it's done absorbing that one photon, only then it is capable of absorbing the uh, uh, the next uh, photon, right? Uh, at the same time, multiple photons are not absorbed by the electron. Okay, and the the other uh, thing is the the uh, well, final uh, fourth characteristic is that there is no time delay during the absorption of the photon, right? And both absorption of the photon or emission of the electron. It happens instantaneously. And it is, it has to, it, it, this has to do with a lot of things. Uh, one of the thing uh, is that phot uh, photons do not experience time, right? So that's why there is no time delay between this absorption of a photon and an emission of the electron from the surface. Of course, again, this is only possible if the energy of the photon here is time delay absorption of photon and emission of electron. Right, so uh, is that clear? Uh, it is, again, it is because of the fact that, uh, I'll not go into its details, but uh, photons uh, do not experience time because they're moving at the speed of light itself, right? So, so they're, uh, so uh, uh, again, uh, I would not go into its detail uh, in this class, but uh, the, the consequence of that is that it does not experience time. So any uh, thing that is capable of moving at the speed of light uh, will not experience time. So, so, the, so, so what that means is that the photon that was emitted uh, at the instant of the Big Bang when the universe was uh, came into being, uh, and that photon being absorbed today by your eye, your eyes are uh, photomultipliers, photon detectors. And for the photon, it did that instantly. It was created uh, during the Big Bang and then immediately it, it has been absorbed for the photon. That's in photon's frame of reference. Of course, you know that there is such a time, uh, a time gap, right, between uh, that time instant and this instant. So, uh, so because of this, uh, there uh, the absorption of a photon, and it 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 instantly emits, throws out an electron as soon as the photon is absorbed by the uh, electron. Okay, so uh, uh, that point is clear as well. Uh, any, any any questions? No, sir. Okay, all right. So let's let's continue. Uh, one second. Okay. Okay. So uh, so I've been uh, saying that electrons uh, electrons are being emitted, right? Uh, as the photon is absorbed, I, I keep saying that electrons would be emitted. Uh, and now, you know, if the electrons will be emitted, uh, the electron is in motion. It has to be in motion to be emitted from the surface. And if it is in motion, uh, then it is bound to have some kinetic energy. Now, cons uh, remembering the conservation of energy, right, conservation of energy, and the equation for the energy of a photon and its dependence on the work function of the material, we can write down an equation for uh, a photo for the photoelectric effect. 
right? So, so the the mathematical uh, equation for the photoelectric effect is I'll write it down and then I'll explain it. Uh, the energy of a photon, so this ga e ga subscript gamma is the energy of a photon, is equal to the work function of the material plus the kinetic energy of the electron, right? So the photon must have uh, enough energy such that it is the sum of the uh, work function that the material has, right? It has to have enough energy and then it all that energy will go into photon uh, more, would, well most of it would go into the work function and it would separate the electron from the surface the rest so now the electron is separated the rest of the energy of the photon goes into moving this electron away so that it's being ejected. So that's why uh, the equation is the sum of these uh, two quantities. Uh, is that point clear? Yes, sir. Uh, is, this, uh, is this equation uh, clear? Okay, all right. So, so now let's, uh, well, uh, expand it uh, because we know that energy of a photon is just H times F, whatever the frequency is of that photon, the work function is H times F naught, the threshold frequency. So work function is related to the threshold frequency. Uh, kinetic energy is what of any uh, electron would be half mv squared. Again, uh, in this uh, expression, H is a Planck's constant. Uh, F is the frequency of any photon that you're throwing at it. F naught is the threshold frequency of the material and uh, well, not really of the material, but uh, it's a characteristic of the material and your wave should have enough uh, frequency that you're throwing at it. Uh, and then you have half mv squared where m is the mass of the electron, uh, v is the velocity of this uh, electron. Uh, and now it is a more convenient uh, from this point onwards that uh, you're familiar with this unit uh, joules, right? For uh, it is the unit for energy. But when we are doing uh, this type of particle, say uh, we use another unit for energy, it is called electron volts. Th this unit uh, of energy is uh, more convenient uh, in writing, uh, because uh, in joules, you would have uh, a lot of, uh, you can say into 10 raised to power this, into 10 raised to power that. Uh, uh, but then uh, when we write it in terms of electron volts, that part ba basically becomes uh, simple. So uh, I'll define uh, what this electron volt is. Uh, this is also a unit of energy. And it is defined in such a way that uh, it is really, uh, this is the energy that is gained by an electron when it moves through a potential difference of V. Right, so, uh, well, uh, this is uh, one walls, right? Unit walls. Okay, so so which means uh, this again, this thing just comes from the fact how we define uh, voltage, right? Or potential difference. Remember, uh, you must be familiar with this, that voltage is just uh, energy per unit charge. Right, so then uh, energy is really just uh, voltage. So energy is just voltage times the charge. Uh, uh, of course, in our example, we're talking about electrons. So the uh, the uh, the voltage is just V, and the charge is uh, E of an electron. So so this becomes uh, 
uh, you can rewrite this as a one EV. Now, uh, this helps you in uh, defining uh, uh, electron walls in terms of joules, right? Because, uh, so what is, this is one electron volt, right? But what is the charge of an electron uh, in, uh, in the SI units, right? In the SI units, which means that in terms of joules. Uh, uh, so the charge on an electron is uh, one. So I write it one times the value of E is 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19, and then V as it is. So I just replaced E with this thing. So this becomes 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19. Uh, and what is, uh, what is this? This thing uh, multiplied by V is just joules in sign, in uh, 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 sign, sign SI units in the SI units, right? And so this would be one EV is equal to this. So this is a useful relation that helps us in converting from uh, one unit to the uh, to another unit, right? Uh, okay, so uh, we'll discuss. There are uh, there are a couple of more. Uh, Again, characteristics of uh, this photoelectric effect. Uh, uh, I think I said at this point, I said this is the final one, but it's it's really not because we have to discuss uh, the intensity of uh, the the radiation. The the we have to talk about the current and all of these things would be uh, then further uh, defined in the uh, in next characteristics. Right. So we'll start with uh, a, a, another one. So uh, sub, let's, let's say that you increase the frequency of the radiation. So uh, let's say I increase the frequency of radiation. Uh, this radiation is of course uh, electromagnetic radiation. Uh, what happens to the maximum kinetic energy? Uh, what would happen uh, to that? Uh, what, what would you expect to happen? If you go back to your equation, E of photon is equal to work function of the metal plus the energy of the electron, the kinetic energy of the electron. So. If I increase this energy of a photon, uh, uh, if I'm increasing the frequency, I'm really just increasing uh, the energy because again, E is equal to HF, right? So, so if I'm increasing the frequency, I'm increasing the energy. And if I increase the energy of a photon, what do you think would happen to the maximum kinetic energy of the electron? Just take a guess or... Uh, you can uh, tell by looking at this equation. I'm sorry, sir. can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, of course. So suppose that I increase the energy, uh, well, I'm increasing the frequency of the photon that I'm throwing at the surface, which means the energy of the photon will also increase. This increase in energy of the photon, what effect does it have on the kinetic energy of the electron that is emitted. It will be increased. You can tell by looking at this. Uh, it, uh, sorry, it? It should increase. It should increase. Uh, can, you, uh, can you suggest why should it increase? Because the work um, function will stay constant. It is a constant, exactly, right? So, so for, a, for a particular material, this work function phi is a constant, which means if I increase the photon energy, uh, energy has to be conserved. So in turn, it to, to, to keep the conservation of law uh, intact, the kinetic energy of the electron uh, will increase. Okay, so next thing is what we call photoelectric current. Uh, of course, electrons are released. Uh, uh, the electrons will be emitted, right? 
And how are they emitted? By motion, they're moving. And if electrons are moving, we know moving charges uh, contributes to or constitutes to a, a, a specific amount of current. And in our case, we're talking about a photoelectric effect. So why not just call it the photoelectric uh, current? And uh, again, uh, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, what it is, is the uh, time rate of emission of electrons uh, from the surface, right? During the photoelectric effect. So suppose if I increase this, uh, uh, the, the photoelectric current, what, what does that mean? If I increase the photoelectric current, I'm just saying that I am having more electrons leave the metal surface per unit time, right? So, so, so if I increase this thing, increasing, uh, I'll use I subscript P for photoelectric current, right? Or we can just call it I. If I increase this I, uh, what happens is, this is done by uh, in increasing number of electrons per unit time. And of course, decreasing the current would mean that the number of electrons has decreased that are striking the surface or leaving, uh, sorry, leaving the metal surface uh, per unit time or per second. So if I increase the frequency of the radiation, what effect would it have on this? Again, remember we, we were uh, saying that if we increase the frequency of the radiation. That's in terms of that we were talking about. So what do you think should happen on the photoelectric current? Any uh, any idea, any, uh, just take a guess perhaps. Uh, again, uh, it, it, Frequency, increasing the frequency is uh, very much related to, or it's just the same thing as increasing the energy of the photon. Uh, if I increase the energy of a photon, uh, would it have any effect on uh, the number of photons? As in, again, the, the energy is of the wave, right? Photons so it is the energy of... Uh, well, it might seem, what happened? Uh, let me just draw it again. It might seem that it would increase, but think about this, think about a photon again. This is one packet of photon, which correspond, constitutes, corresponds to one, uh, a packet of energy. And this energy E is HF of one photon. Now, if I increase this frequency, as in I increase the energy, it is the energy of one photon that we are increasing. And so I can combine this with multiple photons and do the same thing for them. But increasing that energy has no effect on how many photons am I throwing at. The energy corresponds to a specific photon. It is of that one photon, the energy has increased. That doesn't tell you anything about the number of photons. So number of photons is not linked with this frequency or this increase in energy. Is that point uh, clear?